5.30 p.m. in Zion National Park and a house-sized boulder dislodged and fell 3,000 feet, crashing into trees and other rocks. When it landed, it created an explosion that covered the ground in three inches of dust on top of four feet of debris. Luckily, the trail that it fell on was down for renovations and there were only, as of right now, three reported injuries. This is an example, rock stars, of mass wasting, where rocks under the force of gravity become dislodged and end up succumbing to gravity's sweet embrace. It is something that happens every day around the globe and can take, in some cases, as little as a few seconds to as long as a hundred years. It's what I like to call fast geology, and it's what we're talking about today on Rock Talk. Wow! By definition, mass wasting is the downslope movement of materials under the influence of gravity. Basically, stuff's falling down, you know? And it happens all over the world. You can have mass wasting events in the Grand Canyon, in Zion National Park, even underwater, under sea volcanoes, you can have mass wasting events. There's even evidence for mass wasting on other planets, Mars, Io, the moon of Jupiter. It's pretty cool that as long as gravity is acting on materials, mass wasting is going to occur. In mathematical terms, when the gravitational force acting on a slope exceeds the resisting force keeping it in place, mass wasting occurs. Mass wasting! Examples of mass wasting events that you may have heard of include rock slides, landslides, and debris flows. These are relatively common examples of mass wasting, but all types all share the same few requirements in order to happen. They include a oversaturation of water, a lack of vegetation with roots to help keep things in place, an oversteepening of slopes, and lastly, a trigger mechanism. Something like an earthquake or a volcanic eruption that can be the tipping point into mass wasting. Take, for example, this big old, this big old boy right here. This big old chonky boy. It's a real chonkers, man. This is an example of a rock fall where you can see over here on this side, this slope, there's a big old chunk missing. And over here, there's a big old rock piece missing and there's a piece of rock and there's a piece missing and there's a piece of rock are you getting the picture the missing link in the story is mass wasting Woo! Woo! someday there is either an oversaturation of water or some trigger mechanism that allowed this massive boulder to fall from all the way up there what the Heckin' heck, man. It's crazy. It's crazy, and it's happening all the time. Zion National Park is just a small example of really big, epic events like this that happen. But almost every year, especially in the rainy seasons in a lot of areas, it's a very common natural disaster. And it can be a bit of a problem, where if you are not very careful in where you're setting up your home or your house, you can be in danger of a lot of different types of debris flows, rock slides, and things that can happen. Just as for an example, very recently in Southern California, last year, the last couple of years, there's been a lot of rain. And with it has come lots of mudslides and debris flows that in some cases completely covered an entire highway. It was blocked for days while professional first responders were on the scene to unbury the debris. So it's a very serious thing that can happen and it's why being a geologist is so important because as a geologist, you have the ability of being able to see when an area is at risk, at most risk for mass wasting events. You don't wanna build your home on a steep cliff that's prone to breaking and falling down because you'll get mass wasting. There are 
four main types of mass wasting events. Falls, slides, flows, and creeps. The example behind me is an example of a rock fall. This is the same thing as what happened in Zion, where a rock is at a precarious location, either due to gravity or weathering around that rock. But the main point in a, in a rock fall is that the rock is coming apart in one big piece, which is sometimes really dang scary. Like, I wouldn't want to be underneath that, man. It's flatter than a pancake. A ladder than a pancake, man. You would be mass wasted. Behind me is an example of a flow, either a debris flow or an earth flow, where the de material being moved isn't one consistent mass. It kind of starts to mix up internally due to an excess of water, and it almost acts like a mobile fluid, just kind of flowing in to low areas and low spots. These kinds of events can be really disastrous as you have just lots and lots of material carrying just all kinds of debris and trees and rocks rushing over landscape. And when the events, when the situation's right, it can be a really massive event causing a lot of damage. But it's a very central part of geologic processes where these rocks get worn away. What you're looking for when looking at a debris flow, it's gonna be a really good indicator is going to be looking at a lot of jumbled up mess of rocks, just all kinds of different rocks that are going to be a mixture of angular and unangular, of rounded and unrounded rocks, as well as different sized rocks, where you have a lot of big rocks and a lot of little rocks together, a really high diversity in the sizes and the shapes and the kinds of rocks that are there, you know you're probably looking at a debris flow. Mass Wait. A slide is when there is a top amount of material underneath a rupture surface, a plane of natural weakness that weakens and causes material to move on top of it. Common examples include a rock slide, for example. Now, there's something called a sturstrom, sturstrom, sturs, I think it's a sturstrom, which is an example of the biggest, largest, most destructive kind of slides. These are huge events that had even been found to happen on the moon. Absolutely wild, totally crazy. Mass wasting! Woo! Lastly, we have creeps. And no, I'm not talking about Minecraft creeps. I'm talking about the slow, gradual movement of the Earth due to either not a lot of water or there being vegetation present that kind of helps keep things locked into place. And this slows things down. In some cases, so slow that creeps can be measured in hundreds of years and not seconds. So in the end, while oftentimes mass wasting can be a very quick, rapid process, it can also be a very slow and gradual one as well. Mass. Hope that you learned a lot about mass wasting events, rock stars. Get out there and try and see if you can identify where rocks have moved around you. Because I guarantee you, whether it's on a very small scale or a very big scale, mass wasting happens everywhere. Just be careful though, and always remember to be mindful of the, the main triggers of mass wasting. A lot of water, not a lot of vegetation, an over steep slope, and a trigger mechanism, which in some case can be your own feet. So be careful, have a great time, rock stars, and keep on rocking. Check you next time. Place it! Oh. Check you next time, rock stars.